Pressure then, the favourite subject uh, for many players to discuss and ask me about. First of all, the important thing about pressure is our relationship to it. Many people view it as an intrusion or as something bad or negative or an indication that they're defective in some way, broken mentally, emotionally, which I'm sure many of us feel the game can do it, that to us sometimes. But actually, pressure is a positive thing. If players say to me, oh, I don't have any pressure, they don't care about the game. And I know it's not going to happen. I, I knew somebody actually in my professional playing days who I was in the car I'm going to the tournament. He said, I don't, I never have any pressure. And I said, well, wh why are you playing then? You know, what do you want to achieve? He said, oh, I'm only playing because my manager's paying all my entry fees and sponsoring me. So he didn't actually care. And as soon as the management stopped, the sponsorship stopped, he stopped playing. So... Pressure is a sign of caring, a sign of devotion to the game, and therefore a positive indication of your interest in the game. Now, when do we get pressure? It could be at the beginning of the frame, at the end of a frame, against someone who is better than us or who we're better than. We don't want to lose some, to somebody we're better than or somebody who we're very level with or any type of other situation in a game. It affects us all in different situations. And there are a few ways to relate to pressure that I've found to be empowering over the years, for both for myself and for other players. So the first one is to admit it, admit you experience the pressure. You see Ronnie talk about it sometimes, don't you? Oh, I'm, you know, I'm so nervous and I get under so much pressure and I, I don't feel I'm worthy and all of that type of thing. And, and that's refreshingly honest because most put the bravado on that, oh, I don't feel pressure, to give that false illusion that you're not human. But in the world final between Mark Williams and Matthew Stevens, when Mark Williams was 13-7 down, he was, in a, an article, um, stated as saying that when he spoke to his coach, uh, Terry Griffiths at the time, and, and said, look, I'm so scared, I'm so nervous. And Terry said, well, you, so you should be 13-7 down in the world final. And actually, that permission to feel fear, to feel abject terror, is actually quite empowering. And I found the, the better I was at admitting that, yep, yeah, I'm a coward, I'm scared, I'm scared witless, you know, uh, that, that actually that was the greatest tool I had in my armory to be okay with the pressure. The second component of effectively dealing with pressure is to focus on what you want. It's very easy to, I mean, this is easier said than done. So it's not a glib comment that just assumes, oh yeah, just focus on what you want. We're human beings. We are resistant to what we don't want. We tend to avoid problems. That's probably what kept us alive in communities when it was only a few humans together trying to prevent risks to the tribe. And this, this um, tendency to focus on what we don't want. I don't want to lose. I don't want to lose to this guy. I don't want to lose this frame after I was ahead. I don't want to see my opponent going into the semi-final when it's four each and I was four two up. What you meditate on, you tend to create and bring into your experience. So what I'm going to suggest is that you focus when you're under pressure, practice focusing on what do I want to achieve? I want to pot this ball. I want to win, win this frame. I intend to go through into the next round. I intend to appear in the semi-final. I intend to convert this 4-1 advantage to a 5-1 win. Now that sounds very simple, but it's often very counterintuitive to us as human beings and snooker players to do that. So just practice focusing on what, what you on what you want in your daily life as well as snooker. I want to build that extension. I, not, I'm fed up, you know, I hate this house where it's cramped in the kitchen. I want to be my ideal shape and weight and body mass um, body mass index, not I don't want to be fat, I don't want to be overweight, I don't want to feel heavy, I want to have extra income, not I'm fed up being poor, etc, etc. 
practice doing that in your daily life and it will flow into your snooker. Practice it in your snooker and this this mindset of focusing on what you want and going where you want to go will help you to do that in your everyday life as well. Thirdly is using pressure to your advantage. I had the good fortune when I was the UA head coach, I was there for seven years, we as a country hosted Alex Higgins and he is one of the larger, most, one of the most larger than life characters you would ever hope to meet. And I had the opportunity and fortune for him to stay in my apartment for a few days. And that was quite an incredible experience, which is another conversation entirely. But I, I actually had his attention completely and 100% for about 45 minutes where I was asking him, I'd, I made this list of questions that I could ask him if, if I had the opportunity. So I remember asking a few questions, running into my office and then answer, writing down the answers and then coming back with the next two questions and then say, oh, I've just got to go to the bathroom and then writing down his answers again and rushing back out with a couple of other questions. One of which was, how do you deal with pressure? So he said, I use it to my advantage. I play better under pressure. I want the pressure. He said, I feel it's like a jockey riding a horse. It gives me more speed, more energy. I can do more. I can go more places with the pressure. So that was the way he represented pressure in his mind. I'll always forget the, the, the late uh, Lee Spick, actually. He died when he was 34, professional player. Practiced with him a lot in my 20s. And one of the things he said was really interesting. And I've heard this subsequently in, in psychology trainings, and which is that, we were talking about pressure, and he said, I, I don't really feel fear. I said, what do you mean? He said, I feel excitement. I don't feel fear when I'm 4-2 down and I'm coming. I feel excitement. And it struck me that fear and excitement are the same emotion. But he just put a different label on it, and that was a helpful label. I feel fear when I'm 4-2 down uh, in a big match. It's not empowering, is it? Oh, I feel excited. That's more the Alex Higgins mentality, isn't it? So experiment with that, with trying on that mindset for dealing with pressure. And I think, I think you'll find that you resist pressure less and embrace it more. The fourth part of dealing with pressure effectively is to love the pressure, learn to love the pressure. If that doesn't come naturally to you, learn and practice to love the pressure. One of the anecdotes that I read in a book, one of the hundreds of books I'd read in my 20s about sports psychology, psychology in general, performance, human performance, was Daley Thompson, who was the decathlon Olympic gold medalist. And I remember him saying that in the final round, which was always the javelin, wasn't it? So Jürgen Hinksman, I think, was his arch rival, who had thrown a very good throw. That was his strength, I think. Hinksman was his uh, javelin throw. And he was in a winning position for the gold medal, won Olympic Games. And Thompson had one throw left in the javelin, and his previous best throw was not enough. So he had to beat his current best by X meters to win the gold medal. Afterwards, the interviewer said to him, how did you feel in that 10 minutes that you were waiting to know that this one throw was going to either lose you or win you the Olympic gold medal? Now, for me, one of my weaknesses was I resisted pressure. I felt it was an intrusion as a player and I I wanted to minimise it and delete it and get rid of it. I was scared of pressure, frankly. That was my tendency. Uh, but he said something that was very interesting. He said, that was the best 10 minutes of my entire life. That sums up perfectly the approach of loving pressure. So I'm going to invite you to try that on and see if you can reach to that level of 
wisdom that Daly Thompson had regarding dealing with embracing and loving the pressure.